Hi everybody, it's Missy Bollinger from Creative Blessings with Missy and I'm back today with a new video on a project that I kind of stumbled over while I was cleaning my craft room yesterday. When I first joined Stampin' Up! in 2004, um, I was very uncomfortable with trying to figure out measurements and how things went together, but I really found some products that I loved. So this was one of the projects I did, probably maybe 2005. Um, I'm trying to remember what year that paper was in. So it's a flip book held together with the ribbon. And I'm going to have to just kind of go back and forth because of how I have this set up. But um, you open it up and there's places to put photographs or journaling. And then each page just kind of pops open. And then from the middle, it'll go this way. And there's a little flap here that you can put things underneath. And there's a flap up another flap that goes this way with more flaps. So um, you can add your photos and things. And I never really finished it. I used it as a sample for some classes I did back then. Um, but I thought I really, really like it. My only issue was it was made with 12 by 12 cardstock. And I really didn't want to use just white or black cardstock. Um, and we have a few um, other colors available, but I wanted to make it that um, anybody could use it making just regular cardstock, the eight and a half by 11 sheets. So I came up with this size. So I took all the measurements from the first one and I recreated it in a smaller size. This is actually five and a half by five and a half instead of six by six. So I downsized it just a little bit to be able to use um, more products that I had available, I guess I would say. So um, it's real kind of easy, but we'll flip through this one real quick. This is using the um, products from the Peony Suite. So Petal Pink, Gray Granite, and um, Basic Gray are the colors that are in here with all the floral and and um, I did add some, and I did not, I put just little, I'm still working on finishing it. So, but it pops open, and I have some um, pictures that I want to put in here. So I'll be using it for a kind of a little book, a remembrance book. But I thought I'd share the dimensions with you in case you were interested in making one of your own. So we're going to use paper from the um, In Good Taste Suite. DSP, the designer series paper, and um, I didn't bring everything to finish it, but I wanted to give you the dimensions of the paper, and from there you can go ahead and do your own thing. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So I picked papers from the um, In Good Taste Suite. Give them I have. Oops. Let me get the right thing. These are my scraps that were left over. Here we go. So you want to start with... Um, one basic color of cardstock. It uses three colors of cardstock. So you're going to start with a basic, and this will be your back and the flaps into the front. Um, this is going to be 11 inches long by five and a half wide. And then you're going to score it at two and a half, two and three fourth, eight and one fourth, and eight and one half. And that gives it um, a little bit of an opening for the book to close properly. So you'll score and you'll fold those. Okay. The other, you're going to have three other pieces you're going to use for inside the book. One will be in a contrasting cardstock. And it is 11 inches long, but it's five and a quarter inches wide. So it stays inside the book and just a little bit smaller. And this is scored at two and three fourth and eight and one fourth. So it'll fit on that inside. It'll fit between the inside parts here. Okay. And then two more pieces of contrasting cardstock. I'm using Smoky Slate, Night of Navy, and this is basic gray. And this is also scored. It's also 11 inches by five and a quarter, both pieces. And it is also scored at two and three fourth and eight and one half. You will also need two pieces. I chose to use Night of Navy. These will be um, the front and back flap. 
So these are cut at five and one fourth by five and a half. And you always want to make sure you know which direction is which because this will go on to here when we fold this. And this actually gets glued on the inside. Now, if you look, that I made it so it matched up. So you want to go five and a half, it matches five and a half, if that makes sense. And then when you fold it in, you want to make sure it doesn't go further than that. So what I did is I made my folds and then glued it fast accordingly. So I knew that it would be at the precise place. And I did that for both front and back. Okay, does that make sense? I'm actually not assembling this, I'll be assembling it later. Um, and then the other things that you'll need to fill this up, these will be my um, covers, the designer series paper for the front and back. And because this is not a square, if you have directional designer series paper, you want to make sure you're going the right direction. This is, um, the first two pieces are five and a half long, okay, by five and a quarter. So it's five and a half length. So you want to make sure your designer series paper is five and a quarter by five inches. So you want to make sure if it's directional, you have it going the right direction. So those two pieces will go on these inside. Oh, there you go. See, I have the wrong direction. Inside and outside flaps. And maybe I'll grab snail and I'll put this together real quick. And then you're going to have two more big pieces like that. That'll go inside. But these are cut at um, same, same size. Five inches by five and a quarter. I do believe that is correct. Because one of these will be put back here. So that would be the right size for that. And I might have that go in the wrong direction. Um, <clears throat> actually, I think these are going inside of these. These are going inside of these. Yep, so we're okay. Five by five and a quarter. And this will go inside of each of these. Okay. And then you're going to need eight more pieces for the flaps. And you can pick a variety. You can have them matching. You can have them. Um, I chose to do um, four pieces in the brick. Three. Am I missing a piece? One, two, three. One, two, three. I'm missing a piece. Somewhere I have another piece. Did I not put it in the right place? There it is. Okay, so four pieces. I chose just to, because of um, I like the design. These are cut at two and a half by five inches. And again, it's directional, so make sure you're going five inches for the length, two and a half for the width. And I took two of the kind of plastery tile that are in the navy blue, might have navy um, blue. And then I liked the tiles for some of the grays. So you need eight pieces and then some scraps and you can just embellish however you would like. So to assemble this, let me see if I have any adhesive close by. Sorry about that. I was just gonna give you dimensions, but I think I'm gonna put this together if you're gonna stick with me for a few more minutes. So let's start with our um, back piece. And you're just gonna score and fold, fold and score. So that'll give you the opening you want. If you wanna use a heavier adhesive to um, hold the cardstock, you're more than welcome to. I am just strictly using, I'm still using up some snail. Um, we now have seal, it's, it's a great adhesive as well but I'm still using some of this up, so I just want to get it used and out of here. So you're going to put this on first, and your blue is going to be on the inside because we're going to cover the outside with a DSP. Um, so you want to be able to, to see it. I guess you could use either way because we'll cover the inside too. So that's kind of a preference, whichever way you want to do it.
one side is going to have a little bit of an overlap. So um, the directions originally were for this direction, so that's the direction I'm going. And I'm just strictly putting some adhesive and I will put adhesive on the end there. And I am going to actually line this up. I don't want it to go quite the whole way across, but it has to be, it can't be on the other side of that either. So then I'm going to fold it this way. Uh, yes. I'm just gonna put it down lightly because I wanna make sure I'm right. Yes, and I'm off a tiny little bit. So if you don't adhere it totally, you can adjust a tiny little bit. So. The original template had this inside flap a quarter of an inch smaller, and it made an offset, and I really didn't like the offset. So when I changed the dimensions, I um, just made them so they matched. And I found the easiest way to adhere this is to put some adhesive down, and then this will go in the center so it'll hold. And this is going to be very much close to that edge. It's just a tiny little bit of a difference. Same thing. So depending if you're right or left, whichever way you want to go, it'll go that direction. Okay, your designer series paper will go on the front. If you want to put ribbon around it before, I put ribbon after. So it's all preference of how you want to design this. And just make sure you have it going the right direction going the right direction here we go see I almost had that going the wrong direction and I would have had too much of an overlap the one way and not enough the other way so I blacked out the first one I did okay in the second one okay the next part you're going to want to put in is um, the contrasting color and I chose to match my middle with my front so and let me give you a tip on this when I fold these you want these to actually match in the middle. This should actually be five and a half. So these should be two and three fourths, which is the measurements I gave. But sometimes you're a little bit in front of the line, a little bit behind the line, they don't always match up. So before I sport my bone folder, I fold it in so that it matches straight up. And then I'll bone fold from there because my score line might not be exact. So I'll do one side, then do the other, because I don't want them overlapping and I don't want them to be too short. Hopefully that's a helpful tip. And then this gets put on the back. And as I said, these are, um, for me, if I was making for somebody else, I might use tear and tape, I might use um, something else. And you want to make sure you get it lined up there. It's going to be a little bit shorter from top to bottom, but it's going to fit pretty close to where those um, lines are to fold because I'm still having it five and a half. But I have a little bit of a lap up and down. So, okay, then you're going to take your other two pieces and these are going to be your flaps that are going to go this way. So we'll fold those. And the same thing, you're going to fold one, and then you're going to bring the second one in so that it matches to that one. Oh, and I scored pretty good this time. I was having difficulties when I was making the sample. And then this is just going to get glued fast to that flap. So you're just going to glue it fast. And then it'll be a fold. And same with the other one. The other one will get glued fast to this flap, and it'll be a fold. And then your... Um, you can choose where you want to put your papers. I have these to go on my insides so the front and back match. And I have them. And I might have cut them the wrong direction. I did. I thought I had the directional right on that, but it looks like I'm going to be going that direction with it, which is okay. 
and then all these little guys once you adhere those together will be your flaps on these so if you like the pattern um, I'll put pictures up and measurements up on my um, site if you like the pattern let me know I'd love to see what you create and again this was my finished product with it um, and as I said you just kind of go and add whatever you wanted to I wanted to put something over the ribbon and the ribbons just put on with tear and tape guys and as you open there's just mirror images from one side to the other and then here's a front and if you want to do more covering you do more covering with designer series paper if you want less you do less I just happen to have all four of those flaps matching and I left these blank behind here and then I did the little edgelet on the two sides and then the middle I just did as such so hopefully you enjoy the flip album and um, thank again thanks again to whoever put the tutorial out originally back in the early 2000s um, unfortunately I don't have that person's name anymore but I recreated it as a five by five and a half by five and a half so um, you can use most of your eight and a half by eleven cardstock um, to do different colors so let me know what you think I'm glad you joined me today, and I hope you're having a blessed day. Thanks, guys.